Ryan Holiday, thanks for coming on. I got a lot of questions I want to ask you. Um, starting with, how did you get started writing your first book? Um, my, my first book was sort of like your first book in that it was kind of a tell all. Uh, I, I wrote this book about media manipulation. So I don't know. I just kind of hit the, the end of the road on on that part of my life. I wanted to do something very different. And I had this idea that if I just sort of put it all out there, I could, I don't know, light it on fire, blow up my life and, and go in a very different direction. And that that's what that that book was for me. I, I, I don't know. I was only maybe 24, 25 when I wrote that book. So I, I was thankfully pr protected by my own naivete about how it would do. I didn't think it would be as sort of explosive and controversial as it was, but. Uh, what, what was the basis of it? That was, what was controversial about it? I sort I was revealing how media manipulation works, specifically how I had been a media manipulator for all sorts of controversial clients. So I was sort of showing, you know, this is in 2012, but I was sort of talking about how fake news works, how it's made, how people profit from it. But it, it was, you know, anytime you sort of point the mirror back at the media, uh, they are not particularly happy about that. So it was, it was a controversial book. And can you give me an example of like a, that would crystallize that, that um, whole uh, notion of media manipulation? Yeah, so I was I was working, and I opened the book with this story. I was working on a campaign for a movie, and what we did was we we made a bunch of uh, sort of deliberately provocative billboards, and we ran just a few of them, like in a, in a handful of cities. And then I went out and I vandalized all the billboards, and I took pictures of the vandalization, and then I leaked those pictures to the billboard. I got, and then I started uh, I started a boycott or a protest of the ad campaign. So for a few thousand dollars, we created what was this sort of national news story about a, you know, this sort of too hot to handle marketing campaign and, and, and real protests started on college campuses and the New York times and the, the wall street journal had both done op-eds about it. And the reality of it was the entire thing was manufactured. And so it was a, it was an illustration to me, Oh, I'm, I'm just doing this for basically shits and giggles. I'm just doing this to get uh, attention for a movie but how might someone with a slightly more ominous intentions be able to, to wield these same tactics? And unfortunately, that's kind of the reality that we, we live in right now. Mm, that's really interesting. So, um, so when you did this in the beginning, did someone train you in this sort of art of deceptive advertising and marketing? And then you sort of grew a conscience or did you figure it out? I assume someone kind of said, Hey, here's what we do. It was like, is it it's like a, is this like a long running thing you exposed? It seems like it is, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, I think what, what I sort of looked at was the history of media and I looked at, at, at sort of how, I looked at stunts historically, I looked at P.T. Barnum, and I looked at all these sort of great uh, provocative figures from the past. And then also, you know, I think, I think being young and not being trained, it sort of never occurred to me that, uh, that, that, that you shouldn't do this. Uh, and so, so I think there was, again, I, think, I, I don't think I could have done these things in my 30s. I think in my 20s, it was a sort of a right mix of of being smart and also stupid at the same time uh, and 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 not really like I remember I did this one stunt where I pretended to be an expert I was quoted in like 20 different media outlets as an expert about all these things I wasn't an expert about including the New York Times and 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 I was just doing it to illustrate like hey the media will quote anyone about anything that Some there label. is no yeah, yeah there, there really is no vetting process and so I remember after I did this, I was telling someone about it and they were like, you know, that's probably going to be in your obituary or on your tombstone that you did this. And, and I was like, oh shit, like you're right. I, I just not, I had not thought about the implications. All I was thinking of was this would be fun to do. This would be a challenge to do. This would accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. And so I, I again, I, I, I sort of look back at, at my sort of startling amount, a uh, startling lack of foresight there. Right. Um, and so it reminds me almost like of Mad Men, like the, the you ever see the, the uh, TV show Mad Men? Yeah. Right, there's one episode where these women were fighting over, uh, 
uh, I think it was toilet paper or something like that. And they had to get, they staged the whole thing in the store to get media attention. Right. So that's really been going on for a long time, huh? Yeah. I mean, that's been, that's been going on for, for, for hundreds of years, the idea of a publicity stunt, the idea of a sort of a, a and, and this, this happens in politics. It happens in business. It happens in finance, as you know, it, it, humans are humans. And, and we, we get, we are easily excited. We are easily deceived. We, we see what we want to see, and and uh, I think I think sometimes people are surprised at how thin the actual defenses are against uh, these tactics. And ultimately, I, I wrote the book sort of having woken up and realizing again, okay, you know, I'm doing this for a fashion brand, or I'm doing this for uh, a tech company, or I'm doing this for a, an author. Again, what if I'm a <clears throat> I'm a Russian agent and uh, my job is I don't even need I don't even need this to be profitable. I just need to piss people off. It's success for me is just disunity or confusion uh, or 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 sort of divisiveness. And and ultimately, I was kind of writing the book. I sort of this is somewhat self-serving, but but I'm sure you can relate to it. Uh, I was thinking like, hey, look, I'm like a computer hacker. I've hacked into this system. I was doing it for the challenge of it. But now that I'm inside, I realize, oh shit, there's a lot of information in here that people should not be so easily able to access. And so kind of the idea on the book is like, I'm gonna show how this works. I'm not gonna pull any punches. I'm not gonna try to, I'm not gonna try to make myself look like a good guy. I'm just gonna show how it works. And hopefully, right. ideally, people will close these loopholes as a function of me having written the book. And that kind of didn't happen. It, basically, everyone just got really mad at me and and business carried on as usual